Hello everyone, my name is Maddie and I'm going to help you earn your outdoor art maker badge. So two of our activities today are a color scavenger hunt and a outdoor nature sound bingo. So you can find a family member to play with like I did or you can find a friend too. Um, we are going to make our bingo cards and then we head out on our nature walk. Uh, we are walking in our yard and fields so you can just walk in your yard and neighborhood. Um, with your friends and family to play. So the sound bingo, you take your card and you cut it out and place it however you would like on the bingo card. And you can decorate it too if you want. And then you listen for the sounds of nature and you cross it out and yell them out. And then once you get bingo, you yell bingo. And then for our sounds of nature, I mean our, um, our colors of nature scavenger hunt, you look outside and you find the colors and you just draw them on the boxes. Or you can also take pictures and just glue them down later. And yeah. Check. Girls arguing. Check. <laughs> Free spot. Check. Construction. Check. Uh, creek. Yay! Woo! Bingo! So while we were on our nature hike, we found this tree cut down by beavers. And you can see where it fell and they ate onto it and then they built their dam right over there. Welcome back everyone from our nature hike. So what kind of sounds did you hear? My family and I heard bees buzzing, birds chirping, the wind, leaves rustling, a lawnmower, a stream, a car, and a squirrel scurrying. My dad was the first one to win a bingo. We also had a lot of fun with our color scavenger hunt. We found lots of yellow flowers, some red leaves on a tree, pink magnolias, and some more things that have a lot of color. Okay, so let's get started with our wind chime. First thing that we need to do is grab some paper, newspaper, magazine, any sort of paper to put down. I have craft, craft paper, and this is to protect the table and make sure that the surface stays clean. So next thing is that you're gonna need is a stick. I got the stick from my yard. You can find sticks anywhere. Just go out, grab a stick, and there you go. You're gonna want it kind of longish, about this long, and a little fat. Um, you're also going to need some sort of metal thing like um, cookie cutters, washers, or even old silverware that you don't use anymore. And then you're also going to need some string or yarn. I have this yarn to decorate my stick with. Um, you can also use string or even wire. And you're also going to want some beads. And then you may want some paint markers or some paint and then Mod Podge, that's optional too. Um, that's to decorate your stick and everything and to make it look however you want. Okay, so to make my wind chime chime, I'm going to be using cookie cutters and washers that I'm going to 
paint with nail polish and paint markers to make them look nice. And the cookie cutters I'm going to paint with normal paint. And then my stick, I'm going to use yarn to wrap around and make it look pretty. So let's get into making our chimes. Okay, so I'm just starting off by decorating this and wrapping the string around the stick that I found. And this is just to make it look nice. You can paint the stick if you want. You can do anything really with this stick. You don't even need to decorate it if you don't want to. It's your chimes, you can do whatever you want. Um, so just wrap it, paint it. Now that I have this all wrapped around this um, stick, I'm just gonna pick another color and I'm gonna pick my gray. I picked grays and blues because those are my favorite colors. What are your favorite colors? That can be your color scheme. So I'm just gonna tie this gray onto this piece so it's just one long piece of yarn and I can just keep decorating. So now that I got it like this, just can... <laughs> okay, if it sometimes doesn't work, um... To tie a knot, all you have to do is grab your string, you line the two pieces up, the two ends, you wrap it around your two fingers, like this, and then you tuck it under and through the string, and then you pull both ends through and pull tight, and there you go. Now you have one long piece. Then just continue wrapping. Um, I'm gonna lay this flat and just wrap, wrap, wrap. Not yet. Okay, so next color I'm doing a light blue because as I said before, blues and grays are some of my favorite colors. I'm just pulling the string, pull, pull. Make it as long as you want, as short as you want, whatever you want to do, have fun. You can paint it, as I said, or honestly decorate it however you want. Just have fun with the chimes, you know. Take the end piece, as I said before. I'm going to take my gray and my light blue. Another demonstration. Pull it like this. Wrap around your two fingers. And then... Oops, it's okay. Wrap it around, take your shorter piece, tuck it under. Oh no. Sometimes, third time's a charm. Take it, go like this, and under, grab your two pieces. Pull, 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 and there's your knot. Start with your next color, just continue wrapping. So, we found lots of things on our nature hike. We had lots of fun. What did you guys find? I would love to hear. Um, and what was your favorite thing? My favorite thing that we found was probably a beaver dam on our nature hike. We saw lots of streams and flowers and it was really fun there were lots of colors and it was a really nice day outside it's either really hot or really cold but yesterday it was perfect and our whole family went out and it was something that we could all do for fun you can do it with a family member or maybe even a friend um don't do it alone though that might not be the best idea <laughs> So keep wrapping. Um, this one's a smallish string, so it's gonna take a lot more to, you know, get around. This one was the biggest, that's why it's so long and it's fatter than the other two. Um, your branch or 
stick if you want. It can be smaller than mine, it can be larger than mine. You don't want it too big though, because then you can't hang it up. But really just make it however you want, customize it to show you, you know, something fun to do. So just wrap, wrap, wrap. As you can see, there was way less string on this one than there was this one, and this one's longer, so it just depends on how thick your string is. Um, so, yeah, we're getting there soon. And it's okay if you mess up, you know, it'll still be pretty, so. Also, <laughs> if you can't tie knots, that's okay. As you can tell, I'm not great at it either. I had to practice three times, four times, maybe even five times, and that's, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay, down to it. So now we're done. I'm gonna use another blue. We really love blue, as we can tell. And this one's dark blue. Um, I'm not going to use too much of this one because I like the other blues better and I want to give it room. So, snip. And you can use paint too um, if you use paint. Okay, hold that thought. Here's another tie. We got this this time, guys. Wrap, tuck, pull. Cool. And yay, so I finally tied my first knot, first try. <laughs> As you can tell, practice does make better. So yeah, keep wrapping it. Um, with these ties, you can either let them flow freely, or what I'm doing is I'm just keeping them to the stick and wrapping it around. So then in the end, it's going to not show the ties. You can show the ties if you want, you know, that makes it fun. Okay, back to what I was saying before I had to concentrate because I cannot tie very well. Um, you can use paint, uh, just paint your stick however many colors you want, make it look pretty, or just keep your stick if you like it like that. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but over here I peeled some of the bark off. Um, I did stop because it was starting to hurt my fingernails, but you can peel it all off if you want, and then that can just be your stick. So, yeah. So this blue is a little, this string is a little um, thicker than the other ones, except this one, this one was the thickest. So this one wraps easily, and you know, so this one will go farther than the other ones, maybe. And. I'm gonna just keep that knot. I'm not gonna go over it. Because I think it looks nice. Like this. Okay. Stick. And then I'm just gonna go straight back to my... This one's my favorite one. I'm gonna go back to this string. I just need a little bit of it. I'm gonna snip it. So, again, here we are with the tricky tie. Hopefully it doesn't beat me again. Okay, line two edges up, tie it, ready, ready guys. Perfect, there we go. So, now that that's done, we're just gonna keep on wrapping and wrapping and painting and painting, having fun, you know. Okay, so we're back to the beginning of the pattern. This one's my Okay, so you can also always FaceTime a friend if you want, have your mom FaceTime them, and you guys can do this together for fun, you know. When you don't see them in school, you can just do fun little crafts like this with them, and that'll be a fun time. Even though you can't be with your Girl Scout sister in person, you can always FaceTime and earn your badges together. And this will be something fun to do when, you know, you can't go out, so. Okay. So, there we go. Almost there, to the very end. 
think maybe one last color, two last colors. Tell me how many colors you guys used and what colors you used. I was gonna use pink too, but then we didn't have any yarn that color. So I ended up using these. Where'd my gray go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so gray. I'm gonna use a lot of this because this isn't nearly as thick as the other one, so it's gonna take a lot to get to the bottom probably. Trim. Okay, so I hope that you guys found very cool things where you went. And I hope that you guys, you know, find these chimes fun. They're really fun to me. I love them. So I am also a Girl Scout. I've been a Girl Scout for eight years, I think now. Um, it's so fun, I love it. Um, and yeah, it's like one of the many things that I love to do. Um, and Girl Scouts have helped me find a lot of the things that I love to do. So that's why I stuck with it. Um, I live in a more rural area, so there's lots of streams and rivers and trees and forests around me. Um, but if you live in a city, you can still do a nature walk around your yard, around your city, around a park maybe. Just find wherever you would like to go and go. It's really fun, you know. You can find stuff anywhere. You can find amazing colors, amazing nature, anywhere you are. So, so I'm getting down. So, there we go. Just covering it, wrapping it. Okay. Um, I think that I'm gonna leave it like this. Um, and let me figure. Okay, so I'm just going to be tying this to the end, but if you don't, have these little end pieces like I have. You can always loop it through or glue it, or you can also have an adult help you. My mom needed to help me figure out how to do this. <laughs> so it's okay to ask if you don't understand. So just tie it just like this. And pull. And then there we go. That's, I'm decorating it. Okay, so then now that I have this extra string, you can also use wire if you want to or extra um, string that you can cut. But since I have this extra yarn from this end, I'm just gonna take it over like this. I'm gonna make my handle where it hangs up. So I'm gonna leave it like a little bit rounded so I can hang it up where I want. So I think that's good. I'm gonna loop it around this part, around the branch. I'm gonna do it once, twice, three times just to make sure that I like it like that. And then, now that it's like that, you're gonna just tie a knot. So to do that, you need to go ahead and take this, wrap it like that. And of course, if you don't know how to do this, that's fine, ask an adult to. Okay, so I'm gonna triple knot it just to make sure that it stays. You can knot it however many times you want. So I'm just gonna go one more time. Round, under, okay. Pull, and there we go. So now we have our little hang part. So that's where it's gonna hang, wherever you wanna hang it. I'm going to trim off this extra. You can leave it hanging. If you still have extra, I cut a little too much. Just make sure it's really tight. And then, oops, my scissors. Oh, here they are. So, and I would recommend to leave a little bit, at least that much. So if it does get loose, you can just pull it and it won't be loose anymore. So, the, oops. So then there's the finished part of the stick. 
So you're gonna gather this, all the chime part. Um, I have my silverware here too. Um, so the first thing that you wanna do with this, just set, set your stick to the side right now. You're gonna wanna paint it if you are painting it because if not, it won't dry quickly. So I'm gonna start with my washers first and I'm gonna pick my nail polish color. You can use any kind of paint. I'm using nail polish because it's what I have. And I think I'm gonna go with this color. It's sparkly and I love it. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint my washers. And this is kind of like a top coat that you would usually put on, so you can always put on another color. And then do a sparkly coat, because everybody loves sparkles, right? So just paint. And this is going to be so pretty. This is the first. Oh, and you can use any of these things here. Anything that really chimes and makes noise will work because I like the sound that they make. But I'm also using cookie cutters and maybe silverware because I think that it's pretty. So next I'm gonna do this hot pink because you know, pink's a great color, one of the best. So I'm using things that I already have because right now, since we're staying in and not supposed to go out, I'm just making use of the things that I have in the house. So you can do the same, you know, use whatever you'd like that you already have. If you already have paint, great. If you already have paint markers, great. Anything that you really have will work. So just make it look however you want with whatever you have. And that's gonna be your thing and it's gonna be beautiful. So now we got our second washer done. I think I'm only gonna do a few of them. I don't know if I'm gonna do all of them, but Next, I'm gonna use this green color because it's green. Green's my favorite color of them all after blue because blue's my favorite. Then we're just gonna paint it, you know? So, there we go. And done. And I'm gonna do one more washer. I'm gonna use all of my colors that I have. Just move these to the side to dry. And make sure they dry before you do anything else with them. This is the last color that I have. Ooh. Okay, there we go. This is another pink, it's just not as bright. It's more of a ready pink. Okay. So, last washer, and done. So, now that I'm done with these, I'm gonna let them dry and I'm gonna start on my cookie cutters. So, my cookie cutters, I'm going to be using paint. I think I'm gonna use this pink and maybe a purple and a blue and I think that's it I think oh and another purple okay so I chose this bear because nature and I think it's really cute and I also have a heart and a elephant and a tree and I found these in my basement we don't use them anymore so it's perfect. If you guys don't have cookie cutters, it's fine. You don't need to use them. You don't need to go out and find some. In fact, it would be better if you didn't. So I'm just gonna put some paint down. And you guys might wanna use a plate too. I'm just putting it right on my craft paper. Okay, blue. Okay, 
Okay, and purple. So I'm trying to make my wind chimes as colorful as possible. That's why I'm using so many different colors and so many different things. I think that it adds character to it and makes it even more fun. So do whatever you like. Don't need to follow exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna grab out a paintbrush, my smiley face paintbrush, which is my favorite. <laughs> um, I drew it myself. <laughs> so my tree, I'm gonna paint purple, because everybody loves purple. Paint it on top. And you might need a few coats, that's okay. And I'm gonna paint this while my washer is dry. And I think that my wind chime is going to be amazing. So, I would love to see in the end what your guys' wind chimes look like. And I hope that you like them too. You can post them on the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland Facebook page so that I can see them. And you can tell me all of the amazing things that you saw on your nature hike and everything that you're doing. And it would be great. So think about doing that if you want. I would love it. Be the highlight of my day. I promise. Okay. So you can paint the inside too. I'm going, oh, we got some blue. There we go. So I'm going to just finish the outside first. So now that the outside's done and everybody can enjoy it, time for the, we're gonna just let it dry for a minute actually, and then we're gonna come back. So I'm gonna switch colors up and I'm gonna paint my elephant. Isn't it so cute? He's my favorite one, or my bear. They're both, they're both equal. Now I'm just gonna grab my paper towels. Dry it off, get the pink off so it doesn't mix. Oh, that was purple. Get the purple off so it doesn't mix. And I think I'm gonna do my elephant blue. Who doesn't love blue? Okay. Look at that. Very pretty. If you could paint an elephant, what color would it be? I should make my elephant rainbow, shouldn't I? Okay. And these are all things that I have at home. As I said before, use it every like um, screws would even work. Nails too. Just as long as you can tie it to string, it'll look pretty. Just like, okay, I'm gonna let this dry now. Switching colors again. And I'm gonna do my bear now. This is my second favorite, second favorite thing. <laughs> Cause my elephant's my favorite. This is my second favorite because who doesn't love bears? Okay, grab your smiley face brush. Don't draw smiley faces on your brushes. Your parents might get mad at you. <laughs> okay, pink, hot pink, yay. This goes along with my hot pink washer. So, oh no, the brush is still wet. Get some of that water off, then paint again. You can do more than one layer if you want. I think I might, I don't know. We'll just do what we think is best. Perfect. Look at the hot pink bear. I've never seen a hot pink bear. If you have, I want to meet this bear. I want to meet you because everybody wants to meet a hot pink bear, right? Paint. I love to paint. I hope that you do too. Okay, just continue painting. Okay, 
so as you can see, since the brush is still a little wet, it's not going on as well. That's okay, because I can always add a second layer. Oops. So in fact, I'm actually going to just dry it off a little more still, because it's not going on great with it wet. So just, oops, take it, dry it off if it's not going on great. And then there we go. So just paint it. Or you could even glue stuff on it if you want. Don't glue too much because then it might fall off. But if you want to glue some glitter on it or some sequins. Or even put some stickers on it. That would work good. So here we go. Now my bear's halfway done. Set it with the rest of my cookie cutters. So there they all are. Now I have my two hearts. I think I'm gonna do them both light purple, although it may not show up on the red, so I actually might do it a different color. We throw over there. I have the other ones too. Okay. So instead, I'm actually gonna do, since it's already kinda painted, you know, since it's red, I'm going to do my paint markers. These are so super fun to use. That's okay if you don't have them. You can paint them still or use your nail polish and paint them. I'm just going to do a good mix. And I think that I'm going to start off with purple. Yes. So, set this over here. I haven't opened this yet, so we'll see how it goes. And these aren't new, we didn't just buy them. We've had them in our basement for a while, but we just found them today. And actually, since this bleeds a little bit sometimes, I'm gonna do it on a paper towel, because I don't wanna get my table dirty, because then my mom may be mad at me. No, don't want that to happen. Do not want to be in the house with a mad mom forever. Okay, then, just do some dots. It's okay if they're not perfect. As you can see, I messed mine up right there. This one's not perfect either. Who likes a perfect dot anyways? So, just pressing down. And I'm just gonna go straight over this price tag. I'm not even gonna take it off because I think that it makes it look fun. So do the dots however you like. I'm gonna do multicolored dots but I'm gonna try and let this dry, which may be kind of hard because I do not have a steady hand, so I kinda need to be placed on the table. So if your dots are messed up, mine are too, because as you can see right there, um, <laughs> my dots are not great. <laughs> Uh-oh, and I just slipped, so. <laughs> so, but yeah, continue painting, and decorating. Um, these are just some ideas that you can use. You don't need to though, you can always add stripes. I think I'm actually gonna do stripes on the other one. Just make them look nice, or however you wanna make them look. Okay, beautiful, perfect, no. But is it great? Yes. So, now I'm just gonna use one more color and that color is going to be, you can might be able to guess, you might be able. Ready? Blue! <laughs> so, as you can see, blue is a very persistent theme with my wind chimes. So I'm gonna shake, because I haven't opened this. Oh, as I said, whoops. Don't get out on the table. And if they're new, um, just, you know, just gotta press it down like this until the paint starts coming out. So, oh no. Whoopsie. Okay. Okay, there we go. It's coming. It's almost to there. And perfect. So now we got my blue. So. Hopefully this blue does not mess up my purple. Press. Press. Yay. And these dots are fun. You now it adds character to my 
thingy, my chimes. It's gonna look nice. Hopefully, just keep on adding your designs. You can also do squiggles. Everybody loves squiggles. You know, do whatever you'd like. You don't even need to decorate it if you don't want to. Oh, I smudged it a little bit, but that's okay. Just keep pressing. Make it look perfect. Okay, and now I'm done with my first heart. So the second heart I'm gonna do, I'm going to do this one. I'm gonna do, I think, lines. And I'm going to use hmm, orange. We'll see how this turns out on the red. It might not work as well, but it could. Okay. Get the color. Get the color. Get the, oh. Get the color. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Almost there, almost there. <laughs> okay. We're there. Squ lines. Ooh, pretty color. I love orange. And as you can tell, I love a lot of colors. So. The lines don't have to be perfect. Do them however you'd like. Mine are a little squiggly, but that's okay. Just lines. Hope that these look nice nice in the end okay you could also always just draw on these things you know you could draw little people little animals of the things that you see too that could always work next i think i'm gonna use one of these smaller ones actually no I'm gonna use a yellow guess we're keeping it to the warm color Mix it up, mix it up, mix, 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 mix. Almost there, maybe, maybe. And there we go. So I'm gonna apply it next to the orange. And look, I think that those colors are really nice, even though the lines aren't perfect. I still think that it looks nice. I still think it looks fun. I think that this one's probably, I like this one better than the dots too. Oh, here we go. Oh, and I even got a little bit of purple on it. That's okay. Lines, lines. Oop, another one. Oop, another one. And done. And then I have my heart. So, there we go. So now we're gonna start assembling. So here's what I'm gonna do first. Oops. Give me one. Oh no, where's the end? Yes. Okay, big thank you to my mom for helping me find the end of the string. <laughs> um, so you're just going to want to take your string uh, or yarn or wire, whatever you're using, and you're going to want to just cut it um, different lengths. I'm going to cut one here, you know, trim it. And I will cut one a little longer like this. And cut one a little shorter and cut however many strings you need. I need, let's see. Um, so you also need space to tie it. So, you know, you might want it pretty long. So there we go. Okay. And cut them on a string that you need. It's okay if you have too much, you can always trim it at the end. And, oops, 
so I'm just gonna throw that over there in a pile. Sorry, a pile of my string. Cut. There we go. So I think that that's good for now. If I need more, I can cut more. And so here's what you're gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna start off with my washers and I'm gonna just grab a string. I chose this one. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, put it through. So you're actually gonna tie this just like you did this string. You know, wrap it around, grab. And you're gonna wanna tie it at the bottom. So, pull it. And you can try and keep it as tight, as close to the bottom as possible. There we go, and that's it. I'm then gonna take this piece, this little, little shorter piece, Make sure it's not the, it's a shorter piece, not the longer piece. I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. As I said with the string, make sure there's still enough so you can tighten it if you need to. But then, yeah. Okay, so then once you have this, you can add beads to it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, and these are only for fun. You don't need to if you don't want to. Um, you know, it's just it just looks nice. Um, I'm gonna start off with this bead. Fun colors to add. They might even chime a little bit to the wind. So, okay. So another thing that you can add, and I don't know how well this will fit on, but you can take paper beads. I made these when I was younger, probably a little older than you. I made these and they were really fun. But if you do use paper beads, you wanna make sure that you keep it inside and not outside. My mom likes to keep wind chimes inside because she likes to bring the sound of nature into the house. <laughs> so just add that on. Okay. And you don't need too many. I think I'm just gonna do paper bead and then that's it. I'm gonna use this green one, very fun. So the beads, the colors also remind me of like the things that I saw of nature, you know. This reminds me of moss that I saw and it's very pretty, very fun, very colorful. Um, also, as I was saying before, this is all old stuff that we've had for a while. And since I'm like licking this part to get the beads through, you wouldn't want to lick it if it's new. So please don't do that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this to the side for a minute and I'm just gonna continue on with my other things. Okay, through. Okay, so now I'm gonna start on the cookie cutters. That one's a little wet, so I'm gonna do my Christmas tree. First one I did. And I'm just gonna grab another piece of string. I finished my washers. Um, so, here is the cookie cutter thing. So, I like the washers to get through. And you're just gonna pull that. Grab this. Wrap around. Look, by the end of this, I might be a tying pro. Okay. Pull this one through. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just be a little bit better at tying, and that's okay. Just line this up and pull. And then you got that. So that's your string. Nice, beautiful, amazing. You can put beads on it if you want. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna do one of my paper beads. No, stick that <laughs> on. And these are easier to get through. I'd recommend like bigger beads like bigger beads that have bigger holes because it's easier to get the string into. So grab that. Um, no. 
This one's good. So these are probably the best, I think. No. They're fine and they're easy to put the string on. One more of the paper beads. I'm just gonna grab this smaller one. Go ahead and place it through. As I said before, you don't even need to do beads. I'm just doing beads because I think that they'll look nice. It'll make the thing look nice. So. Oh no. Actually, I'm not gonna do this one. I'm actually just gonna do this pink one. So, grab this. Make this part bigger. So the hole is good. Take it and place it through. Hopefully, it works. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do this bead again. And then that's gonna be it. I think that looks good. And there it is. That's it, that's the first cookie cutter you have. Okay, so now you're gonna need your stick again. Um, and here's how to do it. So I'm gonna start off with one of my washers. I'm gonna do this one. Take my stick, pull this up. Okay, so now, we're honestly just gonna move it all the way over. Take this and tie it, just like that. Tie it tight, one more time. Take it, over, two. Oh no, there we go, uh oh, keep the beads with the other beads, clearly, don't tie them off. Okay, and then there we go, one more time, just in case, comes off, tie, and perfect. So I'm going to trim it just a little bit. And go ahead and do it with all the others. Okay, so I'm finishing up the last one. <clears throat> Snipped it. And then there's a finished product. Um, it's fun, you can hear it clinging. And you can hang it anywhere. And there's your finished wind chime. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our next project, which is making a bird feeder from a teacup. Okay, so now we are moving on to our next activity, making a bird feeder. Again, I'll be using materials that I already have, and you should too. Um, everybody will have a different design, and it's going to be really fun to look at. Um, so let's go over our materials that we need to make the bird feeder. So we're going to need some sort of mug or cup to put the bird feed in. Um, we're going to need a sort of permanent glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue, but you can use any glue that you want. And your mom or dad is going to need to help you with this since it's permanent. Also, the reason why I'm using this mug is because it already has a chip in it, so we don't use it that much anymore. Another thing that you can use is a plate. Um, you can just glue the mug to the plate and then you can do that. But if you don't have a plate that you don't want to use, that's fine. Um, the next thing that you're going to need is a perch. You can use old silverware or you can also just use a stick from outside. So if you're not using the plate, all you have to do is just take your fork or spoon or stick and just glue it in however you want and make it look like a perch and then you can use the handle to hang it up. Um, so you can glue it this way to make a perch or whatever way you want. But then if you're like me and you're going to be using a plate, you're just going to take this and glue it onto this. So let's go ahead and add our glue to where you want. Make sure to get your parents help with this since it's permanent. 
and then I'm just gonna stick it down like this. And let it dry a little bit. So just hold it there for a few minutes. And then I'll apply a little bit of glue around it. Okay, just keep it till it dries. Okay, so while I wait for this to dry, I just taped it in place so that I don't need to hold it while it does dry. And next we're gonna make some of the bird stuff. So you're just gonna need, um, if you're doing what I'm doing and using the plate, you can just use normal bird seed if you want. But if not, and you're just using the cup, you can always like mix up some bird feed, which will be good. Um, you can also do this with the plate like I'm doing. So you just need some bird seed. I have this. And then you're gonna need some sort of fat. So I'm using Crisco and um, peanut butter. You can use one or the other if you want. Um, and then you can use dry fruits if you want. I'm using this. Um, you don't need to though if you don't have any. Um, and this is good for the birds in the winter, but since it's spring, they'll still eat it and like it. So, I'm going to start off with some peanut butter. Oh, and you're going to need a bowl to mix it in. And I'm just using a um, plastic spoon, but you can really use anything to mix it. So, I'm just going to grab a spoonful. And then I'm going to do one more. And then now that I have that, I'm just going to make that up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to use this spoon. And I'm also Painful. And then just another spoonful. And mix it up. Oops. Okay, set that to the side for now then. And just mix it up. Just like that. Okay, and you can always ask for help from an adult. You can do however much of this you want. I just use two spoonfuls of each. If you don't even want to do both, that's fine. Just either one's good to use. So now we're going to use bird seed, I mean raisins, and I'm just going to dump a few of those in. You can use however much fruit or dry fruit, or you don't even need to use any, however much you want. Just mix. Okay, now that that's in, we're going to do bird seed. I have this bird seed from when we used to have birds, so it's perfect. You can use any kind of bird seed you want, though. And I'm just going to dump a little bit of it in. Okay. Now that that's done, just give it a good little mix. And that's how you make it. So the birds will like it during any season you put it out, really. But yeah, that's it. So lastly, I'm just going to add some sunflower seeds. You don't need to do this, but since cardinals really like it, I'm just going to add some of that in there. Um, this is going to be a dense, heavy mixture. 
so just once your cup's dry don't add it in before it's dry because then it might move around um just go ahead and just spoon it into the cup and yeah and the bird will like it and we'll have fun so it might look a little bit like this it might look a little different but yeah okay so our next and final activity is going to be making stepping stones so again you use whatever you have at home um so uh what you're gonna need is you could use i'm using a old cookie tin you can use a old cake cake um tin or an old pie plate whatever really you have so that's what i'm going to be using to put for the mold and then you're going to need some vaseline too to put on the inside of the mold so it doesn't the concrete doesn't stick to it you're going to need some sort of mixing um thing i have a bowl and i'm actually going to put this on the inside of the bowl so it doesn't um like ruin this bowl because we still use it uh you can do the same you can find a plastic bag and just put it in and that'll work well and then i have um a spoon to mix it with um i don't have any beads or glass things but i do have rocks so i'm going to be using rocks to make my design and then i also have this which is what i need um and then you can also really, to make your design, you can use these beads, um, but you have to be careful or with that. And really just use whatever you have at home to do what you need. Also, um, you can use contact paper to put on the inside of your mold, and then you put the sticky side up, and so then you put your design down, and it'll stick so it doesn't move around. Uh, you just like line it, and then you cut it to the size of the tin. And I'm not going to do that, but you can. Um, you're also really, really going to want your parents to help with this. Um, so make sure that they do help so you don't make a mess. So let's get started. I'm just going to take this and put it on the inside. Just like this. Just so it doesn't make a bowl. Let's see. Okay, so now that I have my bag ready, I'm just going to set this to the side because it'll get uh, ready fairly quickly since it's quick setup. So you're just going to want to grab your mold and go ahead and put this on. And you're going to want a lot of this so it doesn't um, stick. So just all around it. And you can always get someone to help you with it if you need help. Um, and just like this. Make sure that it's kind of an even layer. There we go. I'm just gonna wipe my hands on the table. And there we go. So wipe your hands off once you're done. And there we go. And I think that. So then come up with your design. I'm gonna grab my rocks over here and just grab a few of them. Set them on the table. You can always do this outside too if you want. If it's a nice day, you can just go ahead and do it outside. So I think that I'm going to just line this part out. So I'm going to just take it like that. So I'm doing the border of it. And then just come up with any design that you like. You could do a butterfly or a soccer ball or really anything that you know if you like to do i'm just gonna find the border like this
do with all my box. You can use really anything to line it. Um, I mean, to the well, just make your design. But you know, since we don't have any, we're, and we're trying to use whatever we have at home, you know, find some stuff and it'll work good. So just set it on this. Okay, I'm almost done this part. I'm just gonna need one last one. Okay, now that I have my border, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a heart, maybe. See how good it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, now for the other side of the heart. And then, there we go, as you can see it's coming together a little more, and I'm just going to use this one last bead, and then there's my design. That's it, um, and there we go. So now we're just going to set the mold to the side again with your design, but be careful, because if you didn't use the contacts paper, it's going to move, um, so yeah. So you're going to need a fair amount of this, I'm using about half the rest of the bag Whew. and be careful ask for your parents help please don't just do this part on your own and you actually do need parent help with this part so just, just kind of okay there we go oops So now that that's done, we're going to add some water and you just want enough water until it's pourable, not too watery, not too thick. So I'm just going to use this and just, oops, and I'm going to grab my spoon and mix it up. Okay, I'm gonna need a little more. So I actually added a little too much water, so I'm gonna need to add a little bit more of this. So grab it. This is why you need parent help. <laughs> So then keep mixing. Pour a little bit more in. Okay, so there we go. Get all the nice bumps out. It should be about this consistency. There we go. Okay, and now you're gonna wanna dump it into your mold once all the bumps are out. And again, you're gonna want parent help. So I'm just gonna get all of this off. And here we go. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pour it into the mold. Just take this off real quick and dump all of it out. There we go. Okay, and then just set it on the plate over here and set the bowl to the side. Pat it down so it's even. 
you know, the air bumps out and then you're just gonna let it dry. And that's how you make your stepping stone. Okay, so um, if you wanna put your gems on top, you can, but I would recommend putting a um, piece of mesh under it, the concrete, so then when you do put your gems on, it adds extra support and the gems don't sink right to the bottom. Uh, I didn't put the mesh down because I usually do it um, on the bottom instead of the top. Uh, this one was mine from a while ago. Um, yeah, this was what it looked like. And then my mom accidentally took it out a little bit too early and so it split so I had to decorate it a little bit. Um, you know that it's um, done, that the concrete's dry when it easily comes out of the tin. If it doesn't easily come out of the tin, it's definitely not done. Leave it in there for a little bit longer. It's okay if it dries extra, it's not gonna do anything. So yeah. So now back to our birdhouse. Once it's dried completely, and I can hold it like this and the plate won't fall off, we're just gonna go ahead and add some yarn or string. I'm gonna connect it with, I think this yarn, and just go ahead and cut this piece. So actually, instead of using yarn, I'm going to use this, and I'm just going to put it through like that. You can use yarn if you want. You can use a carabiner. You can use it ever and make it easily attached to the tree. So for now, I'm going to leave that off. And now we're going to put our suet, which is what the mix we made is called. And we're just going to put it in our cup. Kind of like that. Okay, you can kind of let it spill out a little bit, that's okay, just go ahead and do all of it out, put all of it in, and then once you have that, I'm just going to wipe my hand off here, and I'm just going to take my bird seed, a little more of it, and I'm just going to pour it, Oops. careful, don't make a mess like I am gonna pour it and then spread it around the plate so it looks like that gonna just like that and there you go so then there is your um, bird feeder I'm just gonna wipe my hands off real quick and you there it is that's how it's gonna look and it's gonna hang up in your tree and the birds are gonna love it. So I hope everybody had a lot of fun with the outdoor art maker badge. And I hope that everybody can share their pictures with us and show us what you made.